Yeah. And what was your question? You said you had a question too? Oh, uh, my question is um, that, you know, um, what you were saying as far as your faith is not there yet. I didn't get to ask the questions. I just let you go on. Um, I'm, I've been asking God to just give me a portion of some of the faith that I see that you have. or um, and It's like, how do you get to that level when, you know, so I know certain things have happened just recently that I, I, I'm starting to see that I'm, I'm having a little bit more understanding and that some things is just out of your control and you have to find that inner peace. But how do you fully get to that point where your face is just undeniable? Like, when, well, Good question. For me, I can only answer for me. The, the way that I got that, Lynn, is when I made up my mind that I'm going to I'm gonna worship him with my everything. If he's going to be my God, I'm putting all my trust in him. Nothing else. That's what, when I made up my mind, because that's the only way I believe that I can serve him. Because I keep reading the word, and he just told me I need to have the faith the size of a mustard seed. Nothing more than that. And that mustard seed had to be big or small enough to let God know with this, I'm going to give you my everything. My faith is going to be based off in that. And what I found that when I did that through trials and tribulations, I, I wouldn't waver on that thought. Even though some things didn't go the way I wanted to go, I didn't even see the faith, but I just believed that he was going to bring me through. Then I start standing on it. But I learned then to celebrate on the small steps of faith. I, I, I had to learn how to stand on what I said, what I got had conviction in. If I said I'm going to serve God, I'm going to have faith in God, I had to stand on it. And the devil would keep pressing me on it. He's still pressing me now. But over the years, I've learned to keep pushing in on that faith. And I keep reminding myself, I just need to have a mustard seed. Can I be honest with you, Lynn? Most people have the faith that we're talking about. But somebody has taught them and bewitched them, I'm going to say it, to have them believing that their faith need to be like all of this when all you need is that. But make sure that's all based on God and everything else will line up. Sometimes we kill ourselves because we're trying to have greater faith than what, I don't know, on what? I don't know what you're measuring it on. My faith is, is God a Did I believe he's my Lord and Savior? And did I believe he's the Alpha and the Maker and he can do this and that? That's what I stand on. As far as me sitting up here saying that if the world comes to that, that God's going to do this, I believe so. But if I'm not there yet, Lynn, I'm not scared enough to say, God, I'm not there. When we can be true with God, like what you just said, he will show you and reward you and prove to you that your faith where you are is where he wants you to be. He's okay with that. He's happy with that. It's people that make you feel like your faith in that. And nine times the people that make you feel like that, Lynn, are the people that don't have the faith themselves. They're jealous of your faith. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping I'm making some sense to you. Thumbs up, Lynn, it makes sense or no? All right, cool. Family. Jonah is showing us everything it takes to fix when you have messed up. He's showing us everything that needs to be done to get back in line with God. And the one thing he's showing us is identify within yourself that there is something that you messed up in. And say, Lord, you know what? I messed up on this one. I need to make sure we good. Y'all see that? We need to, I need to make sure that we good. So because, excuse me, I'm not sure if we're good or not, I'm going to pray the only way I know how. I'm going to worship the only way I know how. I'm going to praise the only way I know how. I'm going to do whatever I feel that I can do to get your attention. I'm going to do that. Because that's all I know how. Because my greatest concern is being in your good grace and be used by you any way. So I messed up on this one. But you're not going to get me. Like I said in the message, I, I messed up. But I'm not going to go through this again. I'm not. When we start having that mentality that this is a one-time mess up, it's not gonna happen again, it's not gonna happen again because you're determined to remember what you went through and where you're not gonna go back to. Now, 
what you're gonna see now in the next verse. Can I can I go on? Thumbs up if I can move on, or do I need to stop for a question? All right, I see thumbs up. I can keep going. I, clap hands, y'all know clap hands mean. The, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, let me go on. So then. It says here. Now I want to show you something. I didn't elaborate here, but I realize time in Jonah. Jonah is going to give a recap to us of his situation when he was sinking. Do you realize in verse six, the fish did not grab Jonah as soon as he came out the water when he got thrown in the water. If you never paid attention, Jonah is actually telling you that he had to go through the whole ordeal before the fish grabbed him. Look at what he says. He said, I went down to the bottom. Wait a minute, let me go back. Verse five, the water compassed me about, even my even to the soul. The death closed me, the death closed me around me, and the weeds were wrapped around my head. And y'all catching this? Jonah is actually telling us, hey, y'all, I don't want y'all getting this thing twisted. I didn't drop in the water and the fish got me. I had to sink to the bottom, to the place where I would, I felt the pressures of the depth. Oh, God, how I felt that one. When I felt the pressures of the depth, um, Jonah chapter 2 and verse 5. I felt the depth of the water compassing me, maybe pressing on me. I felt the pressure, y'all gotta get this, the pressure of the water coming on and pushing against my body. I feel the weeds attaching me. In other words, for the first time, I'm giving an illustration, but I believe that Jonah is saying, I know what it feels to be separated from God. I understand when sin just push around me and I feel like I am actually drowning with no escape. Y'all get this? That's what Jonah, he just gave you the illustration. And verse six says, and when I went down to the bottom of the mountains, the earth with her bars was all about me forever. Yet thy brought my life from corruption. Oh Lord, my God. Y'all catch this. He, he's now saying, I was about to just tap out, gone. But yet even at, you took me through all of that, your still mercy and grace still was there to comfort me. Anybody caught that? Even though I'm wrong, even though I'm, I'm being punished, even though I, I'm at the, the, the blink of losing everything, you still was there. I don't know about y'all, but that, that was a shouting moment for me because I realized that Jonah was telling me, James, I understand your story. When you had all manners of evil against you, when you messed up greatly, your God still believed that you had purpose. Your God still believed that you were going to do exactly what he needed you to do in time and in season. But you had to go through this ordeal, as Liz said, to find your faith. You had to go through this deal to find your trust. Or better, you had to go through this deal to learn how to be obedient to God. What am I saying to you all? Some of you all are going through right now because of disobedience. And instead of you having the, 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 uh, 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 addressing your affliction, you keep on adding more to it. And then you're sitting up there and become spiritually jealous over somebody who can praise or somebody that can worship or somebody can run around the church or somebody can testify. You mad because they can talk about the goodness of God, but yet you have the same uh, 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 potentials to receive those blessings, but you're too caught up in your sin. Listen, family, y'all got to understand some of y'all need to check your circles. Your circles are causing you to sin. Your circles are causing you to act out of character. Your circles are causing you to be the big bully of that circle because they look at you for answers and you ain't living the right, right life. And then you sitting up putting a fake life to impress them. You know, like keeping up with the Joneses or the James or the Johnsons, whatever title you want. You're the showcase because remember, you're the one that's sanctified. You're the one that's Holy Ghost filled. And every time a blessing come, you, you're the one attached to it. You know, you lie more than you praise. Nobody going to say amen to that. It's okay. It's true. The problem is, saints, it ain't for you to sit up here and try to make this pretty, this thing pretty. When you go through, you go through. But see, the problem is you can't tell others that you jacked up. You can't say, hey, you know what? Today's not the day. Uh -uh. Today, I'm not, I'm not where I need to be. So y'all bear with me. Let me get myself together 
I'm going to get myself together. Then I can talk to you again. But right now, you got to let me have my problem. Because I got to fix this with God first. And then people are going to look at you like, wow, that's something. When they're having a bad day, they can say, hey, you know, I'm not as good as I was yesterday. I need to see God even the much more because I got to get in line. I understand who y'all are, but right now I need to make sure I'm back to whose I am. But y'all come to church knowing that you jacked up from the floor up, flipped over backwards, can't find your way out. And then when somebody at LDL said, can we pray? You sit there stuck. Well, um, you can't hear the prayer. But the Bible says the strong take on the firmity of the weak. What if that prayer that Elder Epps is about to send up is the thing that breaks out your situation, the thing that throws you that lifeline, that pulls that hook, that anchor out of the ground and sets you free? You don't know. The Bible says make your, 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 your confessions known. Why? Because there's somebody over there that's been through what you did and they got a testimony to drive you out. What did he tell Paul and Peter? Don't worry about their faces. There's some help in the city. God got people to help you in your most problematic days. But if you don't tell nobody, you sit there and suffer. Like somebody got osmosis, going to pick it up in the atmosphere. Boom, uh, brother James is sick. So psh, here we go. No, buddy, that ain't happening. See, uh, you got to speak. Then the Bible says, I know what you're going to ask before you even say it. But he needs you to say it so he can hear you and put that movement in place. The Bible says this, I have you not to be ignorant. He said, with all your getting, get an understanding. He said, if a man seeking wisdom, let him ask. For I would not behold no good thing from you. That means, and he said, and when you pray, he said, I give you 